I going to do, Miss Kate? It's noontime, dinner's coming, and I haven't gotten them breakfast dishes out of there yet. <laughs> you run along, Martha. I can't wait a minute longer. Why, this could go on all afternoon, too. I'll tell the captain you called. You hear what Miss Kate say. Never you mind what's going on around here. You run along now, tend to business. Shoo! Say what you like, Kate, but that child is a teller. I needn't remind you that tellers are cousins of General Robert E. Lee. I don't know who that girl is. The only Sullivan I've heard of. From Boston, too, and I think twice before locking her up in a room with that man is that man, John L. You give me her, Miss Kate. I'll sneak her around back to her crib. This child never gives me a minute's worry. Oh, yes. This one's the angel of the family. No question about that. What happened? She ate from her plate. Herself. She ate with the spoon. And she folded her napkin. Folded her napkin? The room's a wreck, but her napkin is folded. I'll be in my room, Mrs. Keller. Don't be long now, Miss Annie. Dinner be ready right away. <laughs> folded her napkin. My Helen folded her napkin. This soul, this blind, deaf, mute woman, can nothing be done to disinter this human soul? The whole neighborhood would rush to save this woman if she were buried alive by the caving in of a pit and would labor with zeal until she were dug out. Now if there were one who had as much patience as zeal, he might awaken her to a consciousness of her immortal nature. Annie, Annie, you there? Hush. Annie, what's that noise? Just the cart, Jimmy. Where are they pushing it? The dead house. Annie, does it hurt to be dead? There are schools. There are schools outside. School or they keep blind ones worse than you. To read. To read and write. There are schools outside there where There are schools. You ain't going to school, Annie, are you? When I grow up. You ain't either, Annie. You're going to stay here and take care I'm of I'm going to school when I grow up. Forever and ever. You said forever. I'm going to school when I grow up. Girl, I must tell you, your brother is going on a journey soon. Annie! Goodbye, Annie. Write me when you learn how. Don't tell anyone you came from here. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Yeah, you don't, tell, don't tell anyone. Annie, it hurts to be dead. Forever. Might awaken her to a consciousness of her immortal nature. Chance is small indeed, but with a smaller chance, they would have dug desperately for her in the pit. And is the life of the soul of less import than that of the body? <clears throat> Katie, I will not have it. Now, did you not see when that girl after supper tonight went to look for Helen in her room? No. She nearly climbed out the window to get away from her. What kind of teacher is she? I thought I had seen the worst of her this morning <clears throat> shouting at me, but I come home to find my entire house disorganized by her. Helen won't stay in the same room but with her, won't come to the table with her, won't be bathed or undressed or, or cleaned by her, or even by Viney now. And the end result is that you have to do more work for the child than before we hired this girl's services. Now, from the moment she stepped off that train, she's been nothing but a burden. Incompetent, impertinent, ineffectual, immodest. She folded her napkin, Captain. What? Not ineffectual. Helen did fold her napkin. And what hemp name so extraordinary about folded napkin? Well, <laughs> More than you did, Captain. Katie, I did not bring you all the way out here to this garden house to be frivolous. Now, how, do Ms. how does Miss Sullivan propose to teach a deaf-blind people who won't even let her touch her now? I don't know. Fact is, she, she scuttled any chance she ever had getting through to the child today. If you could see any point or purpose into her staying here longer, it's more than I can do. I want you to give her notice, Katie. Captain, I can't do that. Well, if you can't, I must. I simply will not have <laughs> Miss Sullivan. Captain Keller. Liney said I'd find you both over here in the garden house. I thought we should have a talk. Yes, I, uh... Well, come in.
Katie. Captain. <clears throat> I, uh, I uh, first wanted to make my position clear to Mrs. Keller in private that I have come to the conclusion that I am not satisfied. In fact, deeply Excuse dissatisfied. Excuse me, is this little house ever in use? In the hunting season. If you will let me continue, Miss Elvin. I have tried to give you allowances because you come from a part of the country where people, women, I should say, come from whom, well, for whom allowances must be made. I have decided, nevertheless, that I am, that is to say, I, Miss Sullivan, I find it difficult to talk through those glasses. Oh, of course. I do wear them. The sun's been down for nearly an hour now. Well, any kind of light hurts my eyes. Put them back on, Miss Sullivan. I have decided to give you another chance. To do what? To remain in our employ, but on two conditions. I am not accustomed to rudeness in servants or in women, and that is the first. If you are to stay, there must be a radical change in manner. Whose? Yours, young lady, isn't it obvious? And the second is that you convince me that there is any way of you getting through to a pupil who now runs like you from the plague to anyone else she can find in the house. There isn't. What, Miss Annie? It's hopeless here. I can't teach a child who runs away. Then do I propose you? Well, if we're all agreed it's hopeless, then the next question is what? Miss Annie, I am not agreed. I think perhaps you underestimate Helen. I think everybody else here does. She did fold her napkin. She learned. She learned. Do you know she began speaking when she was just six months old? She could say, water. <laughs> well, not really. Wawa. <laughs> Wawa. But she meant water. She knew what it meant. And only six months old, I never saw a child so bright or outgoing. It's still in there somewhere, isn't it? You should have seen her before her illness. Such a good tempered child. She's changed. Miss Annie, put up with it. And with us. To us. Please. Like the lost lamb in the parable. I love her all the more. Mrs. Keller, I don't think Helen's worst handicap is deafness or blindness. I think it's your love and pity. Now, what does that mean? You all feel so sorry for her. You kept her like a pet. Why, even a dog you housebreak. No wonder she won't let me come near her. It's useless for me to try to teach her language or anything else here. I might as Miss well- Miss Annie, before you came, we spoke of putting her in an asylum. What kind of asylum? For mental defectives. I visited there. I can't tell you what I saw. People like animals with rats in the halls. And what else are we to do if you give up? Give up? You said it was hopeless. Here. Give up why I only today saw what has to be done. To begin. I want complete charge of her. You already have that. It has resulted no, in. Day and night, she has to depend on me. For what? Everything. The food she eats, the clothes she wears, fresh air. Yes. The air she breathes, whatever her body needs, is a primer to teach her out of. The one who lets her have it should be her teacher, not anyone who loves her. You all have so many feelings, they fall over each other like your feet. You won't use your chances, and you won't let me. But if she runs from you to us... Yes, that's the point. I'll have to live with her somewhere else. What? Till she can learn to depend on and listen to me. For how long? As long as it takes. Miss Sullivan! Well, Captain Keller meets both of your conditions. It's the one way I could get back in touch with Helen, and I don't see how I could be rude to you again if you're not in the way to interfere with me. And what is your intention if I say no? Pat the other half for Boston and abandon your charge to... To the, the asylum. I grew up in such an asylum, the state almshouse. Rats. Why, my brother Jimmy and I used to play with rats because we didn't have toys. Maybe you'd like to know what Helen will find there not on visiting days? One ward full of the old women. Crippled, blind, most of them dying, but even if what they had was catching, there was nowhere else to put them. And that's where they put us. Across the hall were younger ones, prostitutes mostly with TB and epileptic fits, and some of the kind who keep after other girls, especially young ones and some insane. The youngest were in another ward to have babies they didn't want. We started at 13, 14. They'd leave afterwards, but the baby stayed, and we played with them too. So, 
lot of them had sores all over them, diseases you're not supposed to talk about, but um, not many of them lived. First year we had 80, 70 died. The room Jimmy and I played in was a dead house where they kept the bodies before they oh my the dear! Break. No, it made me strong. But I don't think you need send Helen there. She's strong enough. No, I have no connections, Captain Kelly. Miss Annie. Yes. Where would you take Helen? Oh. Italy. Watch. <laughs> Can't have everything, I suppose. How would this garden house do? Furnish it? Bring her here after a long ride? She won't recognize it, and you can see her every day if she doesn't know. Well, is that all? That's all. <gasps> Captain, with your permission. Why must she depend on you for the food she eats? I want control of it. Why? It's a way to reach her. Oh, you intend to starve her instead of letting you touch her. She won't starve. She'll learn. All's fair in love and war, Captain Keller. You never cut supplies? This is hardly a war. Well, it's not love. A siege is a siege. Miss Sullivan, do you like the child? Do you? You could have a servant here. Oh, I'll have enough trouble without looking after a servant, but that boy Percy could sleep here, run errands. <gasps> we could let Percy sleep here, I think, Captain. And some furniture, all of our own. Oh, Captain, do you think that walnut bed set in the barn would be too- I have not yet consented to the Percy, or to the house, or to the offer, or to Miss Sullivan staying here when I- Very well, I consent to everything for two weeks. I give you two weeks in this garden house. It will be a miracle if you can get the child to tolerate you. Two weeks. Miss Annie, can you accomplish anything in two weeks? Anything or not. Two weeks and the child comes back to us. Make up your mind, Miss Sullivan, yes or no. <sighs> two weeks? Only one miracle? <sighs> Tolerate you. You can't think as little of love as you said. Or you wouldn't stay. I didn't come for love, I came for money. <laughs> Hmm? A. The First Amendment. 26. <laughs> things easily, do you? How will you win her hand in this place? Do I know? I lost my temper and here we are. I have no teaching, no touching. Of course you are well, bigger. I'm not counting on force, I'm counting on her. That little imp is dying to know. Know what? Anything. Any and every crumb in God's creation. I'll have to use that appetite of hers too. Well, maybe she'll teach you. Of course. That she won't. There's such a thing as dulls of heart, acceptance and letting go. Sooner or later, we all give up, don't we? Maybe you all do, but it's my idea of the original sin. What is? Giving up. You won't open her. Why don't you show some pity for what she is? If I'd ever want salt like that, I'd be dead. You will be. Why bother? Or will you teach me? She know where she is? We rode her out in the country for two hours. She can be in the next town for all she knows. That's your sign for me. I know. In two weeks. Miss Annie, I... Please be good to her. These two weeks try to be very good I to will. her. Two weeks. What 
did I get myself into now? I can't understand it. Did I, ever, I had every intention of dismissing the girl, not setting her up like an empress. Yes, what's the secret, sir? Secret? That enables her to get anything she wants out of you. But I can't. No, no, she does not get anything she don't, wants out of me. Don't, Captain. He's afraid. What does he want out of me? My God, don't you know? Everything you forgot when you forgot my mother. What? Now one thing that girl secret is not, she does not fire one shot, then run away! Oh, Katie, Katie, don't mind what he Captain, says. Captain, I am proud of you. For what? For letting this girl have what she needs. Why can't my son be? You think I treat him as hard as that girl does Alan? Perhaps you do. But he has to learn some respect. Do you like the child? How empty the house is tonight. No, no pity, I won't have it. On either of us. I will teach you! How? Percy! Percy, get out of bed and come in here. Mm. Get out of bed and come in here, I need you. You awake? No. How would you like to play a nice game? What? With Helen, she's under the bed, touch her hand. Let me go, let me go, let me go. She try and talk, she go hit me. She can talk, if only she knew. She can make letters, she knows lots of them. Look, this one's C, C. She's mad at me though, she won't play, but she knows lots of letters. Here's another one, look. A, C, A, C, C, A, K, E. Well, she spells cake, she gets cake. <laughs> she doesn't know what it means just yet. Isn't that funny? She knows how to spell it, but she doesn't know she knows. Well, if she won't play with me, then I'll play with you. How would you like to learn one she doesn't know? No. M-I-L-K. M is this. I, that's easy. Just a little finger. L is this. No. Why should I play with you? I'm teaching Percy a new word. L is this. K is this. Oh, jealous, are you? Okay, okay. Very good. So I'm finally back to where I could touch you. Touch and go. You can go to bed now. You're under sleep. Thank you. <laughs> now all I have to do is teach you one word. Everything. Little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. If that diamond ring turns brass, Mama's gonna buy you a looking glass. That looking glass gets broke. Mama's gonna buy you a billy goat. If that billy goat won't pull, Mama's gonna buy you a cart and bull. If that cart and bull turns over, Mama's gonna buy you a dog named Rover. That dog named Rover won't bark. Mama's gonna buy you a horse and cart. If that horse and cart fall down, you'll still be the sweetest baby in town. Water. This is water. 
W-A-T-E-R. It has a name. Egg. E-G-G. It has a name. The name stands for the thing. Oh, it's so simple. Simple as birth to explain. Helen, the chick has to come out of its shell sometime. You come out too. There's only one way out for you, and it's language. To learn that your fingers can make words and say anything, anything at all. Look, this is mug. Mug. M-U-G. It has a name, Helen. It has a name. Katie, Katie, you really should eat something. I haven't the appetite. I'm too restless. I can't sit to it. It'll be a long day waiting. It's been a short two weeks. Who knew life could be so noiseless? It went much too quickly for me. Card. C-A-R-D. Card. C-A. Well, the house has been practically normal. Jimmy. Is it wrong to a quiet breakfast after five years? Jimmy. Have you even the slightest feeling to even imagine what Katie has been going through ever since Captain, that? Captain, it's true. The two weeks have been normal. Quiet, all you say. But not short. Interminable. Water. W-A-T-E-R. But it means this. W-A-T-E-R. This. W-A-T. I only meant that Miss Sullivan is a boon. Of contention, though, it seems. If and when you are a parent, you will understand what separation means. A mother just doesn't lose a child. She loses a protector. Hmm? You will learn that we just don't keep our children safe. They keep us safe. Katie has lived with one kind of child for five years now, and the other is a disappointment in a child. I feel every day more and more in adequate. Kate, I'm sorry. Like that fairy tale, open my mouth and the frog jumps out. No. It has been better for everyone. If only there were someone to help me. I need a teacher as much as Helen. Kate, what does he want from me? That's not the question. Stand up to the world, Jimmy. That comes first. But the world is him. Yes. And no one can do it for you. Kate, could you, would you be my friend? I am. My mind is undisciplined, full of skips and jumps and, hmm. Disinter, disinterested, disjoined, disinterested, disjoined. Where's discipline? What a dictionary. You have to know how to spell it before you can look up how to spell it. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Undisciplined. What are you doing to your eyes? Oh, it's worse on my vanity. I'm learning how to spell. The most unexpected character show up. You're not to overwork your eyes, Miss Annie. Well, whatever I spell to Helen, I'd better spell it right. How serene she is. She learned that stitch yesterday. Now I can't get her to stop. Such a lady. 
She'd rather starve than eat with her fingers. You've taught her so much these two weeks. I would never Not have... Not enough. Obedience isn't enough. Well, she learned two nouns this morning, key and water. Brings her up to 18 nouns and three verbs, but... But... Not. No. Not that they mean things. It's still only a finger game to her, Mrs. Keller. No meaning. Mrs. Keller, shall we play our finger game? How will she learn it? It will come. <sighs> How? How does a bird learn to fly? We're born to use words like wings. It has to come. How? All right. I don't know how. I've done everything I could think of. Everything she's done here. Setting up exercises each morning, stringing beads, hunting eggs. Yesterday, a chick was born in her hands. All of it I spell. We never stop spelling. I go to bed with writer's cramp from talking so much. I worry about you, Miss Annie. You must rest. Now, she spells back in her sleep. Her fingers make letters when her hand doesn't know. In her hand, those five fingers know that hand aches to speak out. But something in her mind is asleep. How do I nudge that awake? That's the one question. With no answer. Except keep at it. Like this. I need more time? Here? Spell it. Because I can. Spell it. If she ever learns, you'll have a lot to tell each other. Start now. Miss Sullivan. Miss Sullivan, on my way to office, I brought Helen a friend. Outside, please, Captain Keller. Oh, my dear child, the two weeks are up today. Surely you don't Not until to... six o'clock. Oh, now what can a difference? Can a fraction of one An agreement make? is an agreement. Now, you've been very good. I'm sure you could withstand it for a few more hours. Miss Sullivan, you are a tyrant. Likewise, I'm sure. You could stand there and close the door if she comes. I don't think you know how eager we are to have her back in our arms. I do know. It's my main worry. Well, it's like expecting a new child in the house. Well, she is so, so contented, so, <laughs> so pretty. You've done wonders for her, Miss Sullivan. Have I? If there's anything you want in repayment, tell us. It will be our pleasure to... I just to... told you, Mrs. Keller, I want more time. Miss Anne. Another week. Miss Sullivan... <laughs> We are more than satisfied with the work you've done here. Besides, what good could another week or so accomplish? Well, I can't promise anything. All I can do is try, keep doing what I've done, it's please. It's enough for us. Look at her. You've taught her content. You've made her more, you know, human. You've taught her things to do, like behave like, even look like a normal child. So manageable, cleaner, more contented. Cleaner? Well, we do say that cleanliness is next to godliness. Cleanliness is next to nothing. She has to learn that everything has a name, that words can be her eyes to the world outside of her and inside too. What is she without words? With them, she could think, have ideas, be reached. There's not a thought or fact in the world that, in, in the world that isn't hers. You write newspapers, Captain Keller. Do I have to tell you what words are? And she has them now. 18 nouns and three verbs. They're in her fingers now. All I need is time to push one of them into her mind. One, and everything under the sun will follow. Don't you see that what we're doing here is clearing the way for that? I can't risk her unlearning it. Please give me more time with her. Another Ms. week Sullivan. to- Miss Sullivan, look. What, what is she spelling? Water. Teaching a dog to spell. The dog doesn't know what she means any more than she knows what she means. Miss Sullivan, I think you ask too much of her and of yourself. Perhaps God did not intend Helen to have the eyes you speak of. I mean her teeth. What is it to you? You've taught us how we indulge Helen for our sake. Is the opposite not true for you? Half a week. An agreement is Mrs. an Keller. agreement. Mrs. Keller. I want her back. I'll send Viney over to pack your things. Not until 6 o'clock. I have her until 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Come on, Katie. No, no, not water. Dog. D-O-G. No, not water. Dog. Percy. I don't know 
how to tell you, Helen. Not a soul in the world knows how to tell you. Yes, what's it to me? Give them back their child and dog, both housefolk, and everyone satisfied but you and me. Reach. Reach. I wanted to teach you everything the earth is full of, everything that's on it that's ours for a wink and it's gone, and what we are on it, the light we bring to it. Words. Why, you could see 5,000 years back in the light of words. Everything we share, think, feel in words. So our souls in darkness are done with, even in grace. And I know, I know one word, and I could put the world in your hands, and whatever it is to me, I won't take less. How? How do I tell you that this means a word, and the word means this thing, wool? Or S-T-O-O-L means this thing, stool? Napkin, brass, F-A-C-E, face. H-E-R, mother. M-O-T. Let her come! And Annie. Why not let it stay buried? I think God must owe me a resurrection. What? And I owe him one. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. Annie. I've been waiting to give you this. What? Your first month's salary. With many more to come, I trust. It doesn't express how we feel. It doesn't pay our debt for what you've done. What have I done? Taken a wild thing and given us back a child. No, I did one thing. Don't do this. Don't do it's that. It's more than any of us could have done. I all wanted the to years teach her what language is. I wanted to teach her. You will have time. I don't know how. I know without it to do nothing but obey is no gift. Obedience without understanding is a blindness too. Is that all I wished on her? No. No. Maybe. I don't know what else to do. Simply keep on, keep doing what I've done, and hope that inside she's. That inside it's waiting like water under the ground. All I could do is keep on. It's enough for us. You can help, Captain Keller. How? Even learning no has been at a cost of much trouble and pain. Don't undo it. Why should we wish the to? The world is an easy place for anyone. I don't want her to just obey, but to let her have her way and everything is a lie to her. I can't, and, and I don't even love her. She's not my child. So you have to stand between her and that lie. We'll try. Because I will. As long as you let me say that is the one promise I'll keep. Agreed. We have learned something too, I hope. Won't you come now to supper? Yes. Why doesn't God pay his debts each month? I beg your pardon? Nothing. I, um, I just used to wonder how I could earn a living. Oh, you do. I really do. Now the question is, can I survive it? May I? Oh, we glad to have you back, too. Probably. <laughs> what? 
Oh, keys. <laughs> yes, I'll keep the keys. I think we've had enough of locked doors, too. Evening, General. Will you say the grace, Jimmy? And Jacob wrestled with an angel until the breaking of the day. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the angel said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Amen. Oh, you angel. That was a very strange grace, James. Will you start the muffins, Ev? It's from the good book, isn't it? Well, of course it is. Didn't you know? I knew. Hey, Miss Annie? Oh, please. <laughs> then why? I meant it is from the good book, and therefore from grace. Well, I don't know about that. Miss Annie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, there are plenty of things from the good book I wouldn't care to hear right before I eat. Well, fitting in the sense that Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and so is his piggies. I declare, James. Pickles and Dev. Of course, you know my opinion of your pickles. <laughs> this is the last of them, I'm afraid. I didn't put up nearly enough last summer. This year, I intend to. You know, Reverend stopped in at the office this morning, complaining mm. about how his uh, hands weren't laying. Poor fellow, he mm. was out of joint. All he could do was... I always suspected those hands. Of what? I think they're Pappas, because he tried. Well, now, James, mm. you're pulling my lower extremity. <laughs> You might as well, next time we know. Miss Annie! No! It's a very special it day. Will be when I give in to that. Please, I've hardly had a chance to welcome her home. Captain Keller. Oh, Katie, we decided that if we indulge Helen in these outbursts. She's learned not to throw things on the floor and kick. It took us the best part of two oh, weeks it's and. It's only a napkin, it's not a dough. Mm -hmm. And everything she learned is. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Keller, I don't think we should play tug of war for her either. You give her to me or you keep her from kicking. What do you wish me to do? Let me take her from the table. Let her stay. Mm -hmm. My goodness, she's mm -hmm. only a child. She and ask outsiders not to interfere. Outsiders? Mm -hmm. I'm the child's aunt. One's heard so much, Miss Annie. I've made all of Helen's favorite foods tonight. It is a homecoming party, Miss Annie. She's testing you, you realize. She's testing you. Jimmy, now that she's home, naturally I naturally she... wants to see what will happen at your hands. I said it was my main worry. Is this not what you promised me half an hour ago? Well, she's not kicking now. I'm not learning not to. Mrs. Keller, teaching her is bound to be painful. I know it hurts to watch, but she's she'll live you. up to just what you keep demand of her, no more. She's testing you. Jimmy, be quiet. I have an opinion. I think No I one's interested in hearing your I'm opinion. I'm interested. Of course she's testing me. Let me keep her to what she's learned, and she'll go on learning from me. Take her out of my hands, and it all comes apart. Be bountiful. It's at her expense. Please pass me more of her favorite foods. Take her, Miss Annie. Thank you. No, okay, now I'm afraid you're the difficulty, Miss Annie. Now we'll keep her to what she's learned. You're quite right about that. But I don't see why we need to send her from the table. After all, she is the guest of honor. Bring her plate back, please. If she were a seeing child, none of you would tolerate one. Well, she's not. So I think some. T so I think a compromise is called for here. Bring her plate back, please. Now that she's home, she naturally wants to see what will happen, and we all take some aversion to our teachers. It's not unnatural. And naturally, some outside hand can smooth things out. Now, shall we start over? I think we started it all over. <gasps> Don't get up! Where are you going? Don't smooth anything out for me. Don't interfere in any way. I treat her like a seeing child because I ask her to see. I expect her to see. Don't undo what I do. Where are you going? To make her fill this picture again! You let her speak to you that way, Arthur? A creature who works for you? No. No, I don't. Let her go. What? I said let her go. She's right. She's right. 
Kate's right, I'm right, and you're wrong. If you drive her away from here, it'll be over my dead chair. Has it ever occurred to you that on one occasion, you might be constantly wrong? Captain. Sit down. Everyone, sit down. Jimmy, won't you please sit down? All right, come. No, she's not here. Pump! Water, Helen. This is water. W A T E R. It has a name. Teacher. I love Helen forever. <laughs> <laughs> 